Hey guys, so it's been a while since I made a video and I thought since we're in quarantine I might as well use my time wisely instead of just laying in the sofa and watching Netflix So I'm gonna teach you what I've been learning for the whole of my uh, uni year and I will do some challenges hopefully they're exciting enough that you guys are wanna want to watch more um and yeah so today i decided to teach you how to uh make a sleeve and today is going to be the kimono sleeve so we can start easy basically um what i used to make everything is how they taught us at uni so they gave us these blocks that we used to then manipulate and make a different version basically make it more interesting because this is like the basic block this is oh this is a uh bodice back okay and then we obviously have the front we have the sleeves and we have the skirt they never gave us a trouser so i'll try and figure out how to change that up uh later so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to make a pdf file um of a one-to-one -one ratio of these and i will give it to you guys in the description so that you can just copy me and make your own so today with the kimono sleeve we're going to need the sleeve block and we're going to need i'm going to actually use the, the bodice front and and back so that's the bodice front yeah so it goes like here yeah i even have the mannequin here if you guys want to see so this one would go around here obviously it would be made out of fabric so it would like mold around the body and then we have let me just show you guys so we we'll go around here and then we um we have these points which i'll talk about on a different video that help you join the sleeve to the bodices and these are the darts so what happens with these is in the fabric you note them down and you just basically close it off you fold it and it you close off this gap so it disappears so that line overlaps with that line okay so let's get started hey guys i am back um so basically we are making the kimono sleeve as i said you also need the pattern pieces as i said these are in the pdf uh, below i will make sure i put it in the description and first we're going to start with the back and the sleeve i got this roll from amazon it's like one meter by i don't know 60 meters or something 60 or 50 i'm not sure and it was like 40 pounds so i will leave a link below for this one i just thought it would be better to buy a long roll because if you think about it it's more worth to buy this one if you know you're gonna make a lot of different pattern pieces for a lot of different projects instead of buying just a small amount which is gonna cost you more in the long run because you're gonna keep having to buy more and more plus you have a limited size like you can keep going with this you will also need a, a ruler or a measuring tape I'm gonna take mine out now and you need a pencil what you need to do first is you lay out your uh, paper so just stretch it out on the table then over the paper you put your pattern pieces so if I take this out You're going to lay your pattern pieces down so we start from the back and 
what I advise you do first is you trace off the whole back bodice. So all the way around, whole way, and you note down the darts and you note down. These ones you don't need to note down because you won't need them for this one. Okay? To be honest, the darts are not even that important either because usually when you're doing a kimono sleeve, the bodice will be quite like large it's not really fitted usually unless you want that to be the thing you want to to work on so you have your bodice trace it off then um by the way it says here size 12 but really it's uh size 8 um because I have made a lot of things for myself using these patterns and I'm a size 8 so in reality if this was like a real size it's size 8 then this is UK sizing by the way so you have drawn your whole um, back this is the center back of your piece obviously if you're going to make the full thing you would want to have the other side of the back this by the way is the front so we don't have to know about this right now then with your sleeve you're going to place it using this line which is the center line of the sleeve you're going to match up this line to that one so that you make a continuous so so that line just carries on from the shoulder and you then trace it all the way down as you can see for this for the kimono sleeve you only need to trace half of it so this side doesn't need to be traced off only this side okay now i know this is the back sleeve because obviously we have two little notches here and usually so if this was a normal sleeve this would be matching up to that so i know this is the back and this is the front the front always had, has one notch and the back has two notches so this is going to line up i would advise you no, note it here and note it on the other side trace it off all the way around keeping all the um, extras that you have for example this is a notch if you wanted uh, sorry this is a dart and if you wanted you could get rid of it but i didn't really want to get rid of it because then it would make this really skinny and the kimono sleeve is usually very large and very baggy and you're going to make a very nice and smooth line connecting this the the bodice to your sleeve it can be higher it can be lower just however you want it to to look mine looks like this you don't have to be very specific you just have to make sure that when you do the second side which is the front don't forget this is the back i'm gonna write it big this is the back um these are going to be very important measurements so that they fit into each other perfectly then you are going to measure all the way around one centimeter because this is going to be your seams and then you cut it off so don't forget your seams or else when you want to sew it it's going to be much smaller than you expect it to be now you start again using the same strategy as before let me just find okay this is my front you put it down on the on the paper as you can see so what i did for the front here is i traced it all off okay all the way around except for this so now we have the bodice front okay this is the front this is our center front sorry for my nose it's because i just sneezed like a hundred times um what you're going to do is you're going to check where your sleeve has to go so I would join up the edges of your uh, bodice so your back bodice and then 
what you have to do is you have to good so this is matched up perfectly so because you want them to match perfectly you're going to note it down you're going to draw over it just press the back I'm going to draw the whole thing all the way around as you can see mine wasn't done 100 percent perfect and after you do this when you get up to the top of the sleeve okay you get up here to the edge as you can see here that's the edge of the sleeve so the very the very top can you see that it's the very top of the sleeve you're going to note that down and you're going to make sure you note it down on the other paper okay so that because that would have been here okay however this is my front yes this is my front however look at my front bodice if i do this if i place it down it actually ends here so in order for them to match up perfectly what i'm going to have to do is reduce the dart so from here to here the measurement is Two point two centimeters. So I'm going to have to reduce two point two centimeters from the dart. So what I'm going to do is move it up to the edge where it's actually meant to finish, and I'm going to actually make the dart smaller. So now instead of it being this wide, is this wide, so that when these join together, okay. Um, the top, the shoulder is going to be exactly the same size for the front and the back of the bodice. And then you just, you obviously have drawn already the rest of it. And that's how you make the kimono sleeve. Now, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to make it for you guys so you guys can see how this is going to look like. My bodice is very, very short. So usually kimonos are much longer as I, I'm showing now on the screen so that's like a traditional kimono however because we're trying to save fabric you know and this is for demo purposes I'm going to make it at uh, this length so we're going to, I'm going to use some calico because this is the cheapest fabric also because we're in quarantine right now so I don't really have access to a lot of fabrics to show you guys so using the calico i'm going to make half of a body so you will see later what i mean by this so first step is i'm going to lay down my calico i'm going to try and find a way to um save as much fabric as i'm doing this as well usually you follow the grain line but i don't want to waste a lot um so i'm going to pin that there also guys whenever you do something never throw away like decent sized pieces of fabric so even like if this is something like this amount of fabric is an extra from the project i keep it and i put it in a bag so later if one day i need that mic that size piece i can use it for something else so this is my amazing little package it has everything it has pins it has needles it has measuring tapes it has tailoring book. um so what we need is some pins this is why I had the window closed because there's kids outside. Mm, they're cute, but they're interrupting the video. So I actually got my pins also from Amazon. I always buy my stuff from Amazon because it's just cheap. So whatever you see me using in the video, I'll make sure I'll put in the link below so that you can see. So uh, pins, we have the scissors. So I'm going to pin these down. That maybe was a bit too many pins, but okay. 
Also, be careful with your fingers. I always, always, always pin myself. Okay, so I'm going to start on the side here. So we're going to take a quick break um, while I am pinning. As you can see, I'm uh, very focused. Um, uh, we are going to learn about the history of kimonos because I not only want to teach you guys how to make things, but I also want to make you aware of what's their origin and um, give you some interesting facts about it. So originally, kimono was a Japanese word for clothing, but in recent years, the word has been used to refer specifically to traditional Japanese clothing, right? And kimonos, as we know it them today, came into being during the Heian period, and I am going to um, find some pictures to show you of how they used to look like. So kimonos reflects uh, Japan's natural beauty in their designs. If you take a look, they usually have a lot of nature, a lot of flowers and birds. And this is really beautiful and it really shows Japan's natural beauty. So if you notice, they're also really, really colorful and they have really big and bright patterns on the kimonos. And something I've also just realized is that they put a lot of emphasis on the shoulder and below the knees they usually have most of the design something else really interesting that i found out is that actually married women and unmarried women wear different kimonos so a single woman wears a broad sleeve kimono for informal occasions like in the new year or the annual official coming of age ceremony and these kimonos are always eye-catching they're decorated with dyed and embroidered patterns and the sleeves are so wide that when they put their arms to the sides the sleeves actually almost touch the ground so that was really really interesting um, and then the most formal gar garment for a married woman is a narrow sleeved kimono so you guys last but not least Kimonos actually started out as an undergarment worn in ancient Japan. And later on, in the days of the samurai, authorities tried to ban extravagant kimonos. So this was um, a ban on things such as gold embroidery because this was deemed as wasteful and forbidden. Even ordinary embroidery was actually banned. <laughs> so the fabric was covered with tie-dyed um, speckled patterns and that's all they could have because they did not at this time um, they could not use any embroideries or any other embellishments in the kimonos so that was actually really interesting i hope you guys enjoyed the quick history and fun facts uh, lesson and now it's time to go back to the tutorial okay guys so um we are back i finally pinned the whole thing um, as you should yourself, obviously you would make the whole thing front and back, so you'd have to also cut these out um, upside down, so on the other side, so that you can have the other side of the body. Um, so I'm going to cut this now, and then I will show you the pieces before I sew them, and after I sew them. Okay guys, so basically... I have just cut everything. Sorry, that was my chair. And now I'm going to unpin it and I'm going to sew them together. So this is the front and this is the back as you can see. Um, let me unpin it and show you guys. So when we sew them together, we're going to sew them um, outside with outside, like so. So I'm going to pin these together. I'm not even going to bother about the, um, the darts because we're not doing darts for this one. I'm just going to leave it loose. I'm going to just pin it. So now that I've pinned everything together, I'm going to uh, sew it along the edge where I've pinned it. And then I will flip it inside out. If you get a fabric that's um, going to fray a lot, I would advise you to do some sort of edge stitch all along the edges here so that they don't um, just disintegrate and your whole thing gets messed up. 
Uh, so after you iron it, this should be nice and flat all the way to the edge. But because I haven't ironed it, it's um, not complete. Um, that's the front and the other one is the back. As you can see, this is like where your neck would be. So if I try and just fit my arm through this. Yeah, you guys can see how long this is. Obviously, you can always extend this aside if you wanted to make a longer arm. But that's the kimono sleeve. I will show you um, on the mannequin in a second. So guys, um, I put it on the mannequin now. My floor is very messy, as you can see. But um, remember what I said, this part is the front because it's more curved. And then the back and if it's perfectly on the mannequin as you guys can see um so i never actually tried putting this on the mannequin but it's actually not that loose i thought this would be looser so maybe we can do another video one day um trying to experiment and make it this side looser for the for the um, kimono sleeve so as you can see it's a continuous sleeve usually in sleeves there's a line going along here where the sleeve was stitched but this one is continuous like so so you can make the sleeve longer you can make the sleeve tighter you can make it looser you can make the bodice looser as you wish and you can make it way longer you could make this you could join this with the skirt and you could turn it into a long dress with the uh, kimono sleeve okay so there's many things you guys can do about it and that's the end of the video really um i hope you enjoy it see i'm gonna put my my hand for this i hope you guys enjoy it and um tune back for more this was very easy and very simple, and the other ones are not that hard, to be honest. Although this is the easiest type of sleeve to make. If I made this in like a thinner sleeve, like in a thinner sleeve, in a thinner fabric, like a lighter one, like, uh, for example, uh -huh, satin or something, uh, this would drape much more than the calico, because calico is actually quite thick, if you guys think about it. It... It's very stiff as well. So if you want to make something, it will actually stand. Okay? So yeah. Make sure you guys, um, if you want to make this, there's the link in the description for the P PDF. There is also uh, a link to my Instagram where I actually have many other things, like my actual uni projects. And I actually take you guys step by step through... Um, the progress of each my one. My current one is a lifeguard project, which I can't actually finish because uh, the whole corona situation. Um, I don't have a, what do you guys call it? Uh, an overlocker machine, which actually does this on um, stretch fabrics. And if I don't use this machine, I can't finish the um, the trousers. Uh, sorry, I can't finish the shorts I was making or the inflatable vest, which is actually something really cool that I'm making. I think I'll still finish it after the corona situation like, calms down and we're allowed to go back to uni. But for now, you guys can only see the things I've done from before this whole outbreak started. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Check out the other videos and um just stay tuned for more because this is just the beginning and i'm just warming up so much better content and more content is to come thank you bye guys also don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and comment down below what you guys want me to do